Hello and welcome back to Open Everyone. Pursuing to Save David uh, is a film about a veteran's struggle to return to normal life after coming home from deployment. And David's inner battle begins to affect his personal relationships as he attempts to distinguish what is real and what is going on inside his mind. Let's take a look. You don't know what I suffered. The horrors I lived through, the things I had to do. And joining us now, please welcome actor and writer for the film, Gene Perez. Hi, how are you? Hi, welcome. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So are you a veteran? No, it's, it's actually funny. A lot of, uh, so filming the actual film, I, I got to wear the, 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 you know, the uniform a lot. And after the film, I had a lot of people say, like, hey, you're a veteran, right? I was like, oh, no, just, just an actor. Um, but I, I do have friends who are veterans. Uh, one of my cousins is as a veteran from the Marines. And... Uh, so that's one of the things that pushed me to write and, you know, make this film. So it's inspired by one of your family members? Yeah, one of my family members, one of my close friends as well, you know. Uh, I just so this is common, the PTSD? Yes, it is very common, yeah, yeah. Uh, about 20% of veterans have PTSD, at least. And then out of 50 of, the, 50 of those veterans, you know, they don't seek treatment at all. And then the other half who do seek treatment, they, half of those people get at least, you know, an adequate amount of treatment. So, you know, it's not something that's really, you know, foreseen upon or something that people act on it, you know? So in your conversations with your family members yeah. and friends, like what have you been able to pull out of them? Um, I guess it through your character development yeah. as well as writing, right? Because yeah, you yeah. have to have some type of insight. Yes, yes. So uh, what have you learned? I've learned a lot. I, uh, the first thing I did was I, I, I Netflixed a bunch of documentaries. I talked to my friends, my family, you know, and there's this one documentary called uh, Korangal. It's from, uh, the first one is called uh, Restrepo and it follows Korengal, uh, director of Sebastian Junger. And that, I think that stuck with me the most because that documentary, it, what he does is basically he, he goes to the Korengal Valley, which is in Afghanistan. And it's on top of this mountain and it's a 360. So it's surrounded by woods and everything and they're surrounded by the enemy. So what he does is that this filmmaker, he goes and he stays with them. And the reason for it is that he wants to, he wants to show how, what war feels like and what it does to these soldiers. So throughout the whole film, you see, you know, you see the, the transformation, how they go through. And there's one scene where um, it's the middle of the night and all the soldiers are awake and there's gunshots being heard around, around the base. And you see how, you know, how flustered they are. How they, they lay in their bed. They don't move, you know, how disturbed they are. You know, that kind of, you know. Right. It, it, it's almost like the body takes on uh, a certain uh, feeling uh, after having experienced right, it yeah, regularly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm just trying to, no, I'm yeah, trying to yeah. visualize, I'm going, yeah, 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 now I get it, now I get, you know, I, I, I've, I've never been in that type of situation, but I, I hear about it, and yeah. it seems to be very common, and it's very interesting that you've chosen to document it, yes, yes, yes. In, in, from your art, artistic, of, um, I guess, interpretation, and so right. I'm just curious, like, as to why you chose to capture that. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm an actor foremost. I'm, I'm also a writer, so when I write, I tend to, I want to, I take on, I tackle issues that are relevant, you know. I, I, when I want, when I make films, I want them to enlighten people or inspire people to take action on something that's happening right now, you know. So I had a list of things that I wanted to do, and I met up with Caesar, the director, and we picked out this one, and that one kind of, you know, kind of stuck to us. One of our close friends, Matt, he's a veteran himself, 
So, you know, we thought about him and you talked to him and, you know, it kind of pushed us, you know, to write, to write the, the How many veterans did you speak to uh, in developing this? I speak to my cousin, I speak to Matt a little bit, and I speak to two different ones I, I've met. What's the common thread between all of them? It's funny because the, I believe the common thread is even, you know, how normal they seem, when they two stories of what they've seen or what, you know, what's, what, what happened to them, it's, it's a lot of same, same things. And they also take like a bunch of medication and pills. And then when that point you start to notice, you know, they have five, they're, six they're pill bottles. They're all on medication, you're saying? Yeah. Really? Most of them. Yeah, yeah. What kind of medication? I'm, I'm not sure. You're not sure, but yeah, it has wanna... to do with like the yeah, PS yeah, right, right. PTSD. Depression, PTSD, right, yeah, anxiety, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, that's interesting, right? Yeah. I mean, these men, they, yeah. they actually sacrifice their lives to protect mm -hmm. our, our country, and then um, yeah. they have to suffer for the rest of their lives. Yeah, and, you, you know, people expect that they'd come back and get some type, even if they're injured or something, you know, get some type of treatment. Right. And PTSD is not something you could, you know, you could spot off. You know, you can easily spot, you know, someone who's wounded or someone who's missing a, a, a body limb, but you can't really, you know, look at someone and say, hey, this person has PTSD. Right, because it's internal. Yeah, it's yeah. psychological. Mm -hmm. It's emotional. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, uh, how long is this film? Uh, it's thirty minutes. It's a short. Yeah, short film. Okay, and we're it's going to be screening, right? It'll be screening tomorrow at eight p.m. at the Anthology Film Archives down in uh, by Bleecker Street on Second Ave and Second Street. Is that de its debut? Yeah, debut. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank on you. That. Thank you. Congratu is this your first film? Uh, yeah, this is my first film writing and act acting in it. I've nice. acted in different films. This is the one I have more That's control yours. of. That's yours. It's your yeah. baby that you birthed. Well, right. congratulations on Thank that. Thank you That's so much. That's a really much. big deal. And, you know, and congratulations to you on uh, giving a voice to the men that have served, men and women, I should yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. My cousins have actually. Served. Woman, yeah, no, yeah. no, no. We got to give props <laughs> to the ladies yeah. uh, that have served our, our country and um, made that choice to... Just deal with whatever comes afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Right? Because that's pretty much what you're sharing yeah. as a story. Mm -hmm. All right, so before we go, just give everybody a little synopsis of your story. Uh, my story? Well, not your story, mm -hmm. the story of the film. Gotcha. Sorry, I was like, but no, I'm like, I, can go all day I know with the writer, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I separate the two. Yeah, um, so <laughs> the film follows a, you know, Air Force veteran, David, who comes back after his first tour. And what happens is that so in the film, his father, uh, his father's um, line of succession, they've all been, you know, they've all been to war. His grandfather's great grandfather, and his father really pushed him to go to war. But when he gets back, he doesn't get the same, you know, the same feeling that as when he left. You know, it's not as as, as supportive, and it's not as, you know, it's he's kind of upset that he didn't, you know, that he didn't come back, and he, he come back to like there's a scene, a dinner scene, where they're talking, and he asks, so tell me about the war, and it's like, you know, I don't, don't want to talk about it. And it kind of triggers him, you know, like, why not? You know, you're gone for four years. What, what the hell did you do? So what's good about the film is that it follows, it follows him and also shows not only what he goes through, but how different people react, like his family, his friends, you know. And it's, it brings a very wide interpretation of, you know, what they go through. Right, and how it affects the PTSD. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it, got it. Thank you so much, Gene. Thank you so much. And uh, congratulations <laughs> once again. <laughs> thank and, you, thank and you. And you guys, once again, don't forget uh, to check out the screening of Pursuing to Save David on Saturday, which I also thought was clever because that's PTSD. <laughs> yeah, you see. Um, that's happening on Saturday, uh, January 28th at 8 p.m. Uh, at uh, Anthology Film Archives, which is located on 32 Second Avenue and Second Street in Manhattan. And for more information on the film, be sure to like their Facebook page, Pursuing to Save David.